I will now turn to manpower issues. Some Singaporeans are concerned about our reliance on and competition from foreign manpower. At the same time, many businesses and trade associations have said that it's difficult to hire locals and asked, us for us, asked for us not to tighten foreign worker quotas further to remain globally competitive. The way forward is neither to have few or no foreign workers nor to have a big inflow. We have to accept what Little Island can accommodate. To strike a balance, we must focus on enhancing the complementarity of local and foreign manpower and step up on industry transformation. In line with this, I will support the employment of Singaporeans while we deepen their capabilities and promote capability transfer while moderating our reliance on foreign labour where we must. I will provide further help to support wage increments for companies to retain or draw in locals by extending the wage credit scheme for a year at a core funding level of 15%. I urge employers to make use of our other schemes, of this and other schemes, to redesign jobs and upskill their local staff. For sectors, especially those in new growth areas, where we may be short of skills, we welcome expatriates with the right expertise to complement Singaporeans and help us build capabilities. This will allow us to add vibrancy to our local markets, better serve international and regional markets, and enhance Singapore's attractiveness to global investors. The Capability Transfer Program, or CTP, is one of many programs that support such local foreign skills transfer, a foreign local skills transfer. As of end 2020, more than 140 companies and over 970 locals have benefited or are expected to benefit from 40 projects. I will extend the CTP up to end September 2024. One Singaporean who has benefited from the CTP is, a, is Mr. Mohammad Zaini bin Salamat. He's a technical officer at SP Services who learned skills from foreign experts in network support for the rollout of electricity advanced meters. He's now performing higher value work such as fault isolation and data analysis and supervising junior colleagues. To complement our local workforce, we have the S Pass for companies to hire workers with the technical expertise. I had indicated at the Unity budget in February 2020 that the manufacturing subpass sub-dependency ratio ceiling, or sub-DRC, will be cut when conditions allow. Manufacturing is a significant pillar of our economy. To achieve our vision of being a global advanced manufacturing hub, firms must make it a priority to develop a strong, highly skilled local core in their workforce. We cannot do without foreign workers, especially those with deep skills. But we should moderate further our reliance on them so as to focus on creating good jobs for locals. Therefore, we will reduce the sub-DRC for manufacturing in two steps, to 18% from 1st January 2022 and to 15% from 1st January 2023. This is in line with the tightening already underway in other sectors such as the services, construction and marine shipyard and processed sectors. The move has been carefully calibrated so that firms have one year to adjust before changes are implemented. We will continue to review our s -Pass framework, including the qualifying salary and levies, to ensure we maintain complementarity between the local and foreign workforces.